<laughs> Magna Molo Stinky! Who the hell are you? I'm Lagambi, and you're ugly. Why, you, I'll sever your... You can't touch me. I'm in the Frost Islands, you doo-doo head. I can't, but he can. Curiously, the only thing that went through the mind of the bowl of petunias as it fell was, oh, no, not again. Ladies, gentlemen, and masters of all ladies, welcome one and all to the answer to all of your burning questions about the tiny violet flames you've seen around the place brought to Monster Hunter Rise by our flagship monster, Magnamalo. Hellfire. You've seen this mechanic while fighting Magnamalo himself, and maybe learned some of the basics of it while doing so. But you may have also noticed after defeating him that we unlock armor with skills to let us as the hunters actually take advantage of the Hellfire ourselves. Entirely devoid of the need for Magnamalo to fuel our explosive power, being able to generate our own tiny violet flames. I like this. This skill is what today's video will focus on. The specifics of how it works, how it changes your playstyle, and the questions I'm sure many of you are asking yourselves, is it worth using? Let's start with the basics then. You can read each individual rank of the skill on screen here, but the concise description of the most important part is once you reach level three of the skill, you will have the Hellfire debuff placed on you when any monster you are fighting is enraged. On top of this, the natural timer expiring of Hellfire will not cause an explosion on the hunter, as regular Hellfire would have in the Magnamalo hunt. This debuff is reapplied to the hunter every 20 seconds on the dot while the monster is enraged, and for one minute after after the monster stops being enraged if you have the fourth rank of the skill as well. What I mean by that is when the monster enrages, you will gain the Hellfire debuff. 20 seconds after that, precisely 20 seconds after that, after when you gain the debuff, you will get the Hellfire debuff again. No matter what else happens in the meantime, whether you keep the Hellfire for the full timer, drop it on the floor at any of the various timings in between, or even get hit by the monster, this timer is consistent. 20 seconds after you get Hellfire, you will get Hellfire again. Now that you know this, how can you actually use Hellfire as a benefit to you as the hunter? Well, many of you are probably aware by this point that if you either use a wire bug movement ability while your weapon is sheathed, or use a movement silk bind with power armor while you have Hellfire on you, you will drop the Hellfire on the floor under you. The Hellfire stays in this position no matter what, even if you drop the Hellfire while midair. The Hellfire will stay at that height midair. After this, if the Hellfire is hit, it will explode, dealing damage in a small radius. By hit, I mean if the hitbox of a monster's attack goes through the Hellfire, it will explode. But also, if you as the hunter can trigger these explosions yourself with a weapon attack if you drop them on top of the monster. As well, if you let the timer of the Hellfire naturally expire, it will explode at the end of the animation, which happens after it finishes turning pink. In general, it is good to recognize this animation of the Hellfire turning pink, both on the floor or even on the hunter as you can use this to your advantage in the fight. Using a silk bind every 20 seconds of combat to get full advantage of dropping these hellfires on the floor can be a little bit tedious and difficult. One way to mess with this is to do it in cycles. If you can manage to avoid being hit and avoid rolling three times for the duration of the hellfire debuff, you can see it finish turning pink approximately two seconds before your debuff is going to reset. This is an accurate way to watch this timing, and if you time one of the aforementioned power armor movement silk binds at the right moment, you can effectively drop two puddles of hellfire in one motion at the cost of one wire bug. As if you gain hellfire while you are already in the motion of these silk binds, it will immediately drop on the floor under you as well. So that's just a neat little trick that I found while messing around with this stuff. As for the damage of these ticks, hellfire as a base in high rank is 50 damage to the monster, but having enough ranks of hellfire cloak to allow you to use this skill against any monster that isn't Magnamalo includes a 20% increase to this damage, making every Hellfire explosion that you cause deal 60 damage. Interesting note, in some of this footage you will see me using Hellfire against Tigrex. He works very uniquely in Rise, as I've found through this testing. If I'm not mistaken, in previous games Tigrex would have his hit zones become softer when enraging, making him effectively weaker to slashing weapons, blunt weapons, and ranged ammo when enraged. In Rise, however, when enraged, 
Tigrex just seems to flat out take 5% more damage across the board. Hellfire does 63 damage to him instead of 60 when he's enraged. I tried a barrel bomb to check two and instead of 150 damage, it did 158. 5% damage increase against an enraged Tigrex on all damage type, which is just very unique and I felt the need to point it out given the numbers on screen. You're special. That said, this is not the usual situation. Most monsters take 60 damage per Hellfire explosion consistently all the time. And if you're looking for some way to work that out compared to your damage as a whole, assuming for every 10 minutes of quest timer, you are hunting for eight minutes. And within that time frame, you can either have the monster enraged or be within that little one minute window after the enrage that still gives you Hellfire for 70% of that time, which is a reasonable amount to expect from an average fight. You will on average have this buff active for around five minutes and 40 seconds out of every 10 minutes, which is an average of 17 Hellfires that you have applied to you within that time. If every time you get the debuff, you manage to successfully drop it and pop it under the monster to deal damage, 17 Hellfires adds up to 1,020 damage over 10 minutes. Or if you really want to get technical, 2.1 damage per second while fighting the monster. For reference, one of your buddies, as in your Palicos or Palamutes, averages about 10 damage per second while fighting at full capacity, meaning adding Hellfire to your build is about one-fifth the strength of just having a full-on third buddy at least damage-wise, but that is ignoring two extremely important factors. Firstly, that Hellfire doesn't care about hit zones, and that you are the one in control of it rather than buddy artificial intelligence, so that is a good consistent damage chunk. And then secondly, the most notable thing that we haven't talked about yet, you can knock down monsters with these Hellfire explosions, creating a period of downtime for you to wail on the beast. The first one of these always happens after the first Hellfire explosion that a monster takes, which is extremely useful and predictable. But can you get more than one down from Hellfire on the same monster? Yeah, you can get two quite reliably, actually. After the first down, you need either seven or eight Hellfire explosions to hit your target to cause the second down, depending on the tier of monster that you are fighting, as in their difficulty level as decided by the game. I haven't found the exact cutoff point, but Toby Kodachi definitely requires eight explosions, as does every single monster lifted after him in the Hunter's Notes. You may be wondering, is this actually based on blast resistance, as Hellfire seems to have some relation to blast? And the answer is, sadly, no. This was my first guess as well, but I tried many different monsters to similar results. Great Baggy, who is three star weak to blast, took seven explosions to knock over the second time. Great Rocky, who is two star weak to blast, took seven explosions to knock over the second time. Toby Kodachi, who is also two star weak to blast, took eight explosions to knock over the second time. Anjanath, who is straight up resistant to blast, took eight explosions to knock over a second time. Rajang, who is three star weak to blast, took eight explosions to knock over a second time. It is definitely based on their difficulty tier. Anyways, from this point on, I will refer to that point as eight explosions, as every creature that is a considerable threat in the game requires eight explosions for this second down. I know I'm starting to throw a bunch of numbers at you, so let's regroup some information here to make sense of the knockdown part of the skill. The first Hellfire explosion causes one knockdown. Eight more Hellfire explosions after that causes a knockdown. That is nine total explosions to get to that point. That would take you precisely three minutes after the monster first enrages if you hit every Hellfire for the duration of that time. But what's interesting is that if it is possible to get a third down, if it is a little bit too far out of usable range. I did a total of 28 Hellfire explosions to this Tigrex in the arena to test this in a contained environment, and there was not a third knockdown. 28 total explosions. For reference, that is uh, nine minutes and 20 seconds of perfect Hellfire usage, which is not a consistent thing on a monster that is 100% consistently enraged for that nine minutes and 20 seconds. That won't happen in a real hunt. That will never happen in a real hunt. That's much more accurate of a hunt that is around 15 minutes, possibly even 20 minutes. It really depends on how often you can keep the monster enraged to keep the buff flowing. But long story short, if a third knockdown is possible from Hellfire Explosions, the requirement is so absurdly high enough that it isn't worth considering a consistent part of a hunt involving Hellfire Cloak, which is what this experimentation is all involved around. So it is much more reasonable to expect two knockdowns with good skill usage of Hellfire Cloak. For those wondering, there doesn't appear to be any build-up degradation either over time, meaning if you get the first down after 30 seconds into the hunt, the second down will still require eight more explosions whether you hit that final eighth explosion 
three minutes later or 15 minutes later. It's always the same number of explosions. Also, and entirely unrelated to the effectiveness of the skill as far as damage goes, is the wonderful haunting sound effect that it comes with. A ghostly moaning first in a lower pitch, and then in a higher pitch. The longer the Hellfire debuff is on you before it resets. It is an incredible little flavored touch that I really appreciate for anyone wondering about pairing the Magnamolo weapons with the Hellfire Cloak skill to take use of the Magnamolo Soul ramp up skill. It is unfortunately not quite good enough to be worth using Magnamolo weapons unless you already wanted to use those weapons anyways. Meaning even if you have a Hellfire Cloak in your set, it is probably worth using whatever weapon you normally do and just building Hellfire around it because it's only worth 12 raw while Hellfire is applied. In fact, if you're just looking for the strongest possible way to work Hellfire into your builds, the best way that I can recommend is quite simply that. Get the ranks of Hellfire that you want, and then simply build a regular damage set around it. Talismans can help, I, I won't lie, the main inspiration for all of this research was a particularly cool talisman that I got last week that I've been playing around with, and while doing so, I found some cool things, so here you go. All, all things told, Hellfire is not bad. It's not overpowered or anything like that, but I like to think of it as the equivalent of adding Punishing Draw to a Longsword build, but stronger. My Punishing Draw Longsword set loses some damage and gains the ability to stun the monster two times on average. A Hellfire set loses damage to gain the ability to knock a monster down twice, which is the same value, as well as the damage of each individual Hellfire explosion. Whether this is worth putting your set over just your cookie cutter meta build is a very personal decision over what you like, as more than anything it really depends on your talisman collection. If you can get a talisman with two Hellfire Cloak on it in any capacity, it really opens things up for playing around with this skill. As with that, you can get to three Hellfire Cloak with the only Magnamolo armor piece that you have to wear being the arms, which also gives you two Handicraft, just an excellent armor piece in general. And three Hellfire Cloak is definitely a usable amount, so you can see where you could begin to work this skill in for a super minimal damage loss. The other option, which we aren't quite ready for yet, is Resuscitate. Resuscitate and Hellfire Cloak are a really interesting natural combination, as Resuscitate gives you bonus attack for the duration of the time that you have Hellfire on you. This could also stack with the Magnamolo Soul of Magnamolo Weapons and create a totally different style of gameplay with Hellfire Cloak, where rather than using the Hellfire for the explosions, you instead do your best to keep it on you aside from the occasional knockdown for a massive attack gain. But unfortunately, our current armor and decoration restrictions make it extremely hard to make a set that uses both Resuscitate and Hellfire Cloak to their full extent. But I could really totally see a future where this combo is standard once we have some more options. And I believe that is it. Everything, absolutely everything that you need to know about the brand new Hellfire Cloak skill. I absolutely love this skill and I'm going to try and work it into tons of builds just for the fun factor of switching up my playstyle once in a while, if nothing else. How do you feel about this skill? Are you, like me, looking forward to the potential ceiling of Hellfire Cloak builds in the distant future? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye